what we just saw in that video is an example of one of the rare naturally occurring minerals which is magnetic, something called magnetite. And scientists now believe this mineral becomes magnetic by being hit by lightning which causes all of the magnetic regions inside of the mineral to align in a specific direction. What's really interesting about magnets is they've been around for pretty much forever and we've used them for lots of things. So historically they've been used for navigation in compasses, but there's plenty of modern applications for them as well. So often you will find them in mobile phones, in speakers, and they are commonly used for data storage. And in this video I'm going to be talking specifically about this application of using magnets for magnetic storage to encode data. Here I have an old bank card of mine, and if you take a look at the back of any bank card, any modern bank card, you'll see the magnetic stripe. And on this specific card you can see that it's a black stripe, but often you'll find that it can also be a sort of silver metallic looking stripe as well. So this is a form of magnetic data encoding, and we're going to take a look at that now. So this was the first implementation of electronic sending of payment information, which is really important because it's still actually represented in other forms of payments today. So if you have a look at chip inserted transactions or NFC transactions, the information that you see on the mag stripe here is also represented in some form or another in those forms of transactions. So it's really critical to understand what that information is made up of. If you're interested in the history of credit cards and debit cards, you'll probably have noticed that we still have something called the Diners Club around today. And that actually originates from the 50s. So the way that credit card and debit cards started out is they started out as a sort of membership. So here I have some early examples of, let's see if we can get that in focus, of the equivalent of credit and debit cards today. So these charge plates, and if you have a look inside, you'll see there's a signature of the member. So the way in which credit and debit cards used to work is that you signed up for an agreement and this allowed you to accrue a certain number of sales before you had to pay that specific item off. So that is the origin of a credit card and debit card, which is quite interesting. You can see they've changed quite a lot from today. So now we're gonna do the first lab experiment. And the purpose of this is to visualize the data on the back of a card. So what you'll need to carry out this experiment, you're gonna need some gloves. You can buy latex free if that's something that you need. Ideally you also want either some iron filings if you can get hold of those. You can generally get them online quite easy from science suppliers or suppliers for schools. And you want some ferrofluid which is something you can also buy online fairly easily via uh, places like Amazon or from suppliers to schools as well. I would also suggest you get hold of some paper towel and some pipettes if you can because that just controls the application of the materials we're using. So the importance of this experiment is to understand how data is encoded on the back of the card. And this is particularly important because the information, as I mentioned at the start, is still relevant to modern forms of payment technology. So on the back of the card, we have three up to three tracks of data. And track two, which is the second track, as the name implies, is something that's still represented in NFC in chip inserted transactions and this is called the track to equivalent in those applications. So it's really important to understand what this looks like, what it's made up of, because then we can use that knowledge towards more modern applications of payment technology. So here I have all of the equipment that I'll be using for this first experiment. 
Not all of this is necessary, but I would advise that you utilise some gloves. They can be latex free if you have an allergy to latex, but it's just advisable when you're using a ferro fluid. You don't want to ingest this or get it on your clothes or any furniture because it's going to stain and it's going to be quite difficult to get out and you certainly don't want it inside of your body. So I've got some gloves I'm going to use. And the nice thing about this experiment is it's something you can actually do at home with your kids if you have them and I think equally it's quite interesting as an adult to be able to see this information. And I also have a pipette. So I have a number of cards here, these are expired cards just for the purpose of doing this experiment. And some of these have silver on the back. I've also got some paper towel and that's going to be helpful as well. So as I mentioned at the beginning in some cases the magnetic stripe is silver and I'm going to use one of these cards because when you're putting a ferro fluid onto the back of a card the appearance of the encoded data is much clearer if you're able to use a card which has the silver magnetic stripe. If you don't, you can still see it if it looks like this, that's not a problem. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to use one of these cards. So all you need to do, I would get some paper towel ready and I'm going to just take a little bit of this ferrofluid in to a pipette because it makes the application easier and then I can easily just rest it on the paper towel and it's not going anywhere. So this fluid, ferrofluid, has magnetic particles suspended in a liquid and that's really helpful for us to visualise this information on the back of the card. So if I put a little bit of this onto the back of the card, I'm just going to spread it out a bit like this. We won't necessarily see anything happening straight away and that's because this liquid can be a bit thick. So the best thing to do is to grab a paper towel and you sort of splodge it along, it's not a technical term, but you rub it along the stripe and at the same time you're taking away some of the ferro fluid. And now what we can see on the back of the card is the individual bars showing up and what we can see is information for track one and track two. And if you haven't got ferrofluid you can get access to iron filings. They don't tend to visualise this information as well but you can certainly have a go. You don't necessarily need to use gloves for this. So I'm just going to sprinkle a bit onto there and give it a bit of a shake and there you can see track one and track two on the card. So once you're done with this experiment what I suggest is you throw the materials away that you've used. If you keep your gloves on you can wash your card in soapy water and that will get rid of the ferrofluid and that's sufficient and then you can still use your card but don't use anything abrasive on the back if it's an active card. Ideally you'd want to use an expired card for this experiment. So if you've just completed that experiment congratulations you are well on your way to hacking payment data and cards which is very cool. I think a lot of people assume that this information isn't accessible and you've just seen with your own eyes that you can gain access to that. If you want to take it a bit further I'm going to link to a resource online that you can look at and that will allow you to take a photograph of the card using the information that you've just visualised and translate that into your cardholder information.